Um, so to start us off, I'd like us to stand. Let's stand. I'll just do a small energizer. Just a very short one. And I forgot to introduce myself. My name is Ivy Wanjeri. I'll be your host tonight. So to start us off, I want us to think about one thing that you tell yourself every day. To remind yourself that you're important or that you're beautiful. What's that one thing that you think about and you have to remind yourself every morning or every time you feel you're in a bind? What's that one thing that you think about? So just turn to your, the person standing next to you and tell them that thing. It might be that you say, I'm beautiful in the morning. It might be to say something else. Just share with them for one minute before we get started. Wairimo check, and, check, check. and Patricia, that was so quick. <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. Have you shared with your neighbor? I want you today to go away with that one thing. To remember, to remember that thing that inspires you, that keeps you going. Okay, we may have our seats so that we get started. I'm very privileged uh, this evening to invite my good friend and the founder of the Women Today Show. She's the one who's organized this amazing, amazing event. Could we just give her a round of applause even as she comes up, just to appreciate the tenacity the strength it takes for her to have put this thing together and to continue to bring women together to be women of impact. Um, Christine began this um, Women Today show in Rwanda and she's brought it all the way here when she came back home. And so Christine, you're most welcome to take the stage and for us to start the program. Good evening, <laughs> ladies and some of the gentlemen in the room. Um, thank you, first of all, for coming. Uh, I know today is just, I don't even know what kind of day this day has been. I can't describe how it has been from morning. But I'm so honored to have you all sit here today. Uh, come and engage with women today show, come and engage with the women leaders who are here. A special thank you to Eva Muraya and Joanne Mwangi Elbert. I can't thank you enough for making it today. Thank you so much for just honoring this invite and coming with so much love in your heart. Yeah, I appreciate you ladies. Um, I just want to start by saying, unfortunately, just this evening while we are setting up, Agnes Gadaya, uh, uh Cancelled. She said she might not be able to make it because she has a really bad flu and she didn't want to spread it. <laughs> I was also not feeling well this week and I thought how will this event work but I had to make it work. Thank God that I am okay and well <laughs> and we are making this happen. Uh, that's just part of the journey. That's Women Today Show for you. It's a journey for me, ladies. It's a journey. But I'm still continuing on, and I hope to keep striving on uh, to inspire, encourage, and just spread so much positivity, bring out more women leaders to our conversation. For some of you, you've met me here for the first time, and it's my honor to have met new faces today that believe in the power of Women Today Show. So I will introduce myself. Allow me to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Christine Amira Kabei Immaculate Nerma Joan. Those are all my names. <laughs> but on my, actually, yeah, we are namesakes. I'm Joan. <laughs> but then uh, on my birth certificate, um, some are, don't appear. My ID is Christine Kabei Amira. Recently, I was in Addis and I was given a new name, Askale Mariam. I like it. <laughs> So I've also added it to my list of names. But if you can call me any of those names and identify with me. So Women Today Show is a platform that seeks to inspire, encourage, motivate, 
and enlighten women and also the men because I realize there are so many men who actually watch the show and they share feedback on the side but uh, this is a platform that is for all of us me included actually I use it as a platform to learn also and as I do I engage with other young women uh, for us to be able to uh, learn together so how we do this there are many ways to and, and you know in terms of encouraging women empowerment first is that we do um, women empowerment interviews one-on-one -on -one interviews with women leaders um, and 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 so far we've conducted interviews in kenya and in rwanda there's a period of my life i worked in rwanda yeah as as she mentioned and i told you women today show is a journey so I did a, a number of interviews with women leaders in Rwanda, and there were over 10 interviews. And I was going to have a discussion, those discussions going on with RTV, Rwanda Television Network, and I was supposed to collect interviews, and I went on and I had a, I had a, a short um, a contract with uh, a hotel on the other side, Marriott Hotel, where they were offering me space to these interviews, and I promote, like it was a big idea, big deal. Shock. One day I went upstairs uh, in, a, I don't want to say the place, to do my a presentation on Women Today show. I go back downstairs and my car has been smashed and all my content is gone and I have nothing. And it felt disappointing. The first time I've just launched Women Today show, a dream bringing it to reality and I've worked so hard. I don't know why I'm always trying to do two jobs at the same time. So that was my idea. And I felt crushed and I stopped Women Today show for a while, even in Rwanda. I never even got back to those women ladies. Uh, but if you realize when I start the show, usually these, these pictures of some women you've not seen interviews on displayed, that those are the women. I keep them there as a reminder. Maybe it's time now that I change and rebrand, but I keep that there as a reminder of the journey that has been. In Kenya, however, I came back home in Kenya, and it has been a success with Women Today Show. Let me tell you, women in Kenya, the women leaders are so good, so receptive. I love it. I've had interviews with different women. And I want to mention them here, these powerhouses, because you know they have given us a, a wonderful gift. Someone sitting down and telling their story and their progress and inspiring others. It's not easy to be a bit vulnerable in front of everybody else, to be able to have, you know, like, like make sure that you know, you, you're showing your, your thoughts, sharing them with other people. It's not easy. And so I always really feel inspired by these women and how much they come out to tell their story. And so I just want to see some of the women I've interviewed so far. And today, since we're celebrating women, I just want you to clap for them as I mentioned them. So there's Rita Kavashi. I always start with her. She's really supported me. Managing Director is Suzu East Africa. Beverly Spencer Batoimbo, when she was a managing director for British American Tobacco. Phyllis Wakiaga, yeah, she went the CEO of KM, but now she's moved to Tony Blair Institute of Global Change. Women are really moving, yeah? People are making moves out here. Uh, Wandia Gishuru, the CEO of Vivo Woman. Uh, and today, I'm delighted to say that I'm wearing Vivo, so, I <laughs> so it's actually part of me also supporting back from how well they supported me. Uh, there's Anam Tavati, this is UN Women Country Manager. Zebib Kavuma, United Nations Regional Manager. Carol Koech, the country president, Schneider Electric. Anes Gadaya, in her absence, let's just celebrate her today as much as she's unwell. Country director, Google East Africa. Eva Muraya. She holds so many things. I can't describe her with BSD Group only. She's the, she's the founder of BSD Group, <laughs> the CEO. And she's the co-founder of Top 100 Brands Most Loved by Women. You can see this. Uh, roller banners on the side here and there. That's something interesting. I'll, I will introduce her and make her talk about this more because I find this very interesting. Uh, she's, she's a co-founder together with Ipsos Innovate and they do a study every year, you know, trying to come up with a way that brands um, should be able to, to favor women, you know. I, I really love this idea. And she's also director of KEPSA, Gender and SMEs. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> <laughs> and tonight, I also have the privilege of sitting with Joanne Mwangi Yelbert, the CEO of PMS Group. I mean, I don't know, this name, it's so interesting. <laughs> I will say it. And I hope one day when I come up with a different company, I'll have an interesting name like this one. So that's, I'm so privileged today. Uh, thank you, ladies. 
And, um, you know, usually when we hear these stories from them, we know that we might not necessarily do what they do. Some here, in, we're all in different sectors. I, I'm looking around and some faces are familiar. These women in STEM here, women in finance, women in the development, NGO world. You know, there's all these different women. We know we might not do exactly what they do. But we, from listening to their stories, we get an inspiration to believe that we can achieve our goals too, right? This is why we do what we do at Women Today Show. And I don't want to just close it without celebrating the men who, who actually really support women empowerment. Uh, last year, for all those who attended, uh, we had a male representative, uh, Mr. Lawrence Gidinji, uh, the CEO of Kone, who came in to talk about uh, promoting, um, for, fostering inclusion in the workplace. It was very interesting. I would encourage you to go watch. And I also want to acknowledge Mr. Belete Matebe. He's not in the room here, but he's the managing director of Willow East Africa, where I serve in a different position. And he really, really, really supports women empowerment uh, in the sense that he encourages us to take different roles and different responsibilities. And actually, the conversation about personal branding that I'm going to talk about today was inspired by him. He bought me a book called I Am My Brand. I would actually encourage you to go look at it. It's called I Am My Brand by Kubi Springer. If you're trying to build your brand without any apology, that's the right book. And then he wrote, gave me that book and said, Christine, the world is waiting for you. I see the potential in you. Do what you have to do. So I really have to acknowledge him today as well. Thank you so much. Yeah. So as I was saying, Women Today seems to make an impact. Um, ideally, we have one-on-one uh, -on -one conversations, but then we also have networking events like this here, where I'm trying to do more of this, where we bring now the women leaders one-on-one -on -one and we have interactive discussions, we learn from each other. Uh, you might also get a sense of mentorship also for those who need mentors and just you're inspired to move forward. So as young women, this is important because we don't have to keep reinventing the wheel. I just talked about the idea of personal branding, having learned that from a different woman who wrote a book in the United States, not knowing they would inspire me to bring out an event like this today. So we don't have to reinvent the wheel every time. And uh, we can learn a lot from these trendsetters if we just listen and we ha create time for that. And it saves you a lot of time, energy, and all those things. So as I mentioned, I also serve in other capacities. Uh, I'm also the sustainability and communications manager for Willow East Africa. That means I handle a lot of stakeholder engagement and I focus on areas of water, I focus on areas of energy efficiency and women empowerment, of course, among others. And recently I was just uh, nominated to volunteer as the chair lady for a training committee within the Kenya Water Institute uh, Association. So I, I find that a good thing to be able to promote more trainings for young women, which is, aligned, which is aligned to my passion as well. And of course, I'll engage more with some of you on this. So you can tell that I'm a very, very passionate young lady. I'm very passionate about, very ambitious also, <laughs> and very passionate about development. Uh, especially of youth, and I hope to continue showing up in rooms, in platforms, and create more opportunities for other people also. Um, uh, and as I mentioned, uh, I just want to take it a bit fast because of time. I wasn't really a mathematics person, never have I been. But every time I'm reflecting on things nowadays, I try to do a lot of maths to analyze situations here and there. And um, recently, I did a course on finance for non-finance managers. <laughs> uh, at first, I was dreading the course. I was like, how will I do this? Uh, but then I got to do the course. And from there, I've been trying to do the math to analyze things, to try and think about things, even when it comes to women empowerment. So I'm trying to empower women and then so. When I look at the numbers, I was shocked. Let's start with this. Did you know that approximately 1.4 billion people live in Africa. Okay, this could be nothing if you compare to China or wherever it is, but look at the continent of Africa because we're in Africa. And women cover 50.2% of that population. We are half of that population. Quite interesting, but now if you look at it, if you compare these statistics to the, if you compare it and tally to the backdrop of the GDP contribution, out of the idea that we have 50%, doesn't mean that we contribute 50% of the GDP in Africa. 
we had 33 percent of the of the of the of the total GDP contribution. Not bad, but not good, you know. And and I ask myself, so have we reached the fullest potential as women in Africa? I doubt. I doubt. But I can't answer that question yet because I had to come again and look at Kenya. Kenya is progressing so well. It gets interesting. Um, in, in Kenya, the population of women is 26.73 million. That is like 50.4% of the population, still more than half. Like it looks like in every country, women are more, right? Eva, you must know this also because you handle the idea of brands, you know, doing and being, being able to brand themselves to be more favorable to women today. And that's why it's important to look at women. If you look at the numbers, you look at, wow, there's a lot of population either neglected or, you know, it's, there are so many ideas around it. Um, and, and, and I go back to the question of whether women are actually achieving their fullest potential. And I don't want to be also biased as a woman because there are different ways to look at this idea of GDP contribution and what women are doing. In Kenya, 50% of the businesses are owned by women. But if you look at it, it's in the informal sector, you know. And if you look at it also in terms of the African um, continental view, there are different aspects to look at, yeah? There are some women, and I'm here trying to encourage everybody to reach their fullest potential. There are some women who aspire to stay at home and take care of their families. I love that. They still contribute to the society in a certain way. It's not, not that every woman has to be in an office to work. Not that every woman has to own a business if they don't want. They can choose to stay at home, actually. I'm very... Can I call it progressive or less progressive? I don't know, but I believe that it's okay if that's how they feel they reach their fullest potential. And it made me think about, I, I thought about that in terms of the International Women's Day theme that was there this year, which was aligned to equality for all. And I thought, maybe even as you look at GDP, this index should also consider um, the contribution that women who are really working hard at home to send out their children and, and, and husbands to work, what is their contribution to GDP, right? Uh, I don't want to be biased about women who choose to stay at home because that's their every right. But then there also, they, there's also the idea that most women in Africa, as we know, still work in low-paid subsistence jobs in the informal economy. And we have to encourage them to come to the formal economy. You know why? Because in the, activities in the, the activities in the informal economy cannot be directly observed. And in the same, part, in, in the same uh, conversation, uh, you can't account for what happens in the informal economy. Then nobody wants to pay tax. They don't want to officially open a company. They don't want to be empowered around it. So there's so much work to do to empower women today. And then there's another issue to look at. Women are still new in many ways in the world, including leadership, right? We still need many more women in different respective roles, middle uh, management to high level management ranking. We still need women today uh, in these roles. So there's a lot to do. When I look at these numbers, I'll just summarize there because I had a lot to say. When you look at these numbers, for me, it shows me there's still a lot for me to do. There's still a lot of work to do. There's still a lot of empowerment to do. There are many ideas to roll out, to encourage more women to come out, to reach their fullest potential. And, and, and um, uh, when I look today at the different things here and there, I just want us today to have a delightful conversation on encouraging women. We want to have a delightful conversation to bring out the true personification of women. You know, that's what I'm talking about when I talk about personal branding. I find that as one tool for more women to come out, to speak out, to be able to come out and show that they are bankable, that they are worth investing in, to show that they, can, they have skills, you know. Uh, we are not what gender stereotypes can define us entirely, yeah, but we have our own um, different ambitions, and we, have, we are skilled and we are capable, right? So that's what I'm trying to encourage when I talk about personal branding today. I find it as one tool. There might be many. There are many. No, there might be. There are many ways. But this is just one way we're trying to say. So today, be encouraged by others, you know? Be encouraged. Encourage also yourself to step out into your sp spotlight. 
uncover and rediscover your mastery, your skill. That's what I'm trying to also encourage women when talking about personal branding to promote your unique voice also. Each one of us here is unique. Look at all of you. I didn't even want to come up with a theme for the, for the I don't know, dress code for the day. I was like, let everybody just be their unique selves. Come as comfortable, as cute, as fancy as you feel, and enjoy the day, yeah?